going to invite you to pray with me the prayer of peace, which is printed in the order of service you received as you came in. Let us pray together. Loving God, you alone are the source of life. May your life-giving spirit flow through us and fill us with compassion, one for another. In our sorrow, give us the calm of your peace. Inspire in us hope through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We now come to the time to remember the life and love and friendship of Margaret. So I invite Adele to come forward and share with us some precious memories. I'm going to um, read a letter written by Margaret's brother, Robert. I'll share some thoughts with you. This is a written record of my memories of Margaret Jane Irene Minyoon by Robert Yee, her eldest brother. Margaret was born on the 21st of May 1958. She was just 18 years old when her mother died of a heart attack in 1977. Her main support came from her sister Lorraine, who sadly passed away due to cancer 12 years later. Then her father remarried in 1978. This was a time of unsettled relationships, particularly for Margaret and her brother Alan. Ben died in March 2000 due to ongoing strokes. Margaret married Steve and they had four sons, Timothy, Isaac, Daniel and Joel. The marriage ended and Margaret became the sole supporter on a single parent benefit. This meant that she had many responsibilities to face at that time. I recall that Margaret was a happy baby, a young child. Her mother used to curl her hair with rags. Margaret, being the youngest child, was very well cared for by her mother, Isabel Ward Ewing. She often smiled. She was an outgoing child who enjoyed the company of many family and friends, particularly our Christian friends and family. The Ewing family were well known and respected. Margaret benefited from this Christian upbringing for me. As the years passed, Margaret did not follow a committed Christian lifestyle. The importance of putting her spiritual life right before God was something that Margaret realised she needed to do. After much prayer and counselling, Margaret sought and received the peace that only God can give. She recommitted her life to Jesus as her Saviour and Lord. Margaret told me that herself. Her youngest son, son, Joel, commented on the peace his mother had found in her dying days. Margaret wanted her boys to also find that peace and contentment too. Yes, dear Margaret, in God's peace. Amen. That was from Uncle. And I just wanted to share a few thoughts. Um, Auntie Margaret, as we called her growing up, we were very close to her. Um, we spent a lot of time with her in our growing up years. Um, she was nearly 13 years older than me and only nearly eight years older than my eldest brother. So, you know, my mum was, was older when she was born. Um, and I remember that my mum used to um, give her lots of things and buy her lots of things. She just adored her. She used to say um, that she used to give all these lollies to eat and she was surprised that her teeth were still so good. You can see her very good teeth. Um, I remember that she taught me how to crochet. Um, she was good at it, I wasn't. Um, I remember that my mum and Auntie Margaret both liked surprises. And then uh, one day we had lots of kids in our family and one day we all just turned up on her doorstep at Dubbo and said, surprise, where do you stay? <laughs> that was my mum. And um, she loved it, she loved it. Um, then when I was 17, I went away for a few weeks and when I got back, I walked into my mum's room and out of the ensuite jumped Aunt Margaret and Tim and Isaac. <laughs> surprise! <laughs> so um, they liked their surprises. I know that Aunt Margaret treasured her family, um, her parents, her siblings, her children and her grandchildren. 
and children. Um, and a, a few weeks back, my brother Andrew and I went to see her, um, and we prayed with her. She said we all needed to hold hands. She said she didn't know why, but she just felt we all needed to hold hands. And um, we prayed, and she was just praying for all of you. She was praying for the children and grandchildren, just to know that God loves you. And she was just so peaceful and calm, and yeah, it was amazing. Um, she just had that peace that only God can give us, I think. Um, but we, we can all have. So I just want to say I just thank God for Annie Margaret, and um, I'm sad that she had to leave so soon. It's hard to get your head around that. Um, but I know that she's in heaven with Jesus. She's reunited with her parents and with my mum. And um, she'll always be in our hearts and minds. Margaret's sons also wrote something that they wanted to play, and I'm going to read that for you now. Mum was born on May 21st, 1958, and she was a happy child. She loved the family with every part of her soul. Mum was a happy person that loved her children and grandchildren with everything. People that knew her would say there wasn't a time she wasn't smiling. She never wanted to bring anyone down. She loved God. This happiness and faith brought her and her family peace in her last days. In life, I love you dearly. In death, I love you still. In my heart, you hold a place no one can ever fill. It broke my heart to lose you, but you didn't go alone. Part of me went with you the day God took you home. I'm missing you more than anything until we meet again. The boys go on to say, we're glad that mum went peacefully, peacefully and we are so happy to have had the years we did with her. We'll miss her dearly. We're now going to listen to, it's going to take some time. And as we do that, there may be some flowers that want to play on the top and say, like, whenever you're ready. <coughs>
these memories and so much more Margaret has given you by being part of your life. We respect her journey through life with all its realities. We pray that she will travel safely in this next part of her journey and our love goes with her. Thanks be to God for the gifts we have received from Margaret. Thanks be to God for a life with the courage, honesty, determination, a sense of fun and love of family. As we were preparing for today, when I spoke to the boys, we chose a reading from scripture that um, we thought spoke very much of Margaret. I'm going to read that for you now. It's from 1 Corinthians. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own right. It, does not, it is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As the knowledge it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put on put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, but I will know fully. Then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three. And the greatest of these is love. The reading of Scrolls chosen for today's celebration of Margaret's life say much about Margaret and much about her faith much about her family. And they say much about God, who loves all people unconditionally. Today is about love. It is about how Margaret loved each of you and about how you loved her. It is a day filled with many emotions. It is a day that has been some time in the coming. It is a day to remember and it is a day to mourn on how your lives will be so different from now on. Our reading today is all about love and was chosen for that exact reason. Love is the greatest gift and love is a reassurance for you as you begin <coughs> each new day. May, you, may they give you strength, courage and hope in your grief. I pray that the words of our reading and song penetrate deeply into your heart, that they rest gently in your soul, and that you too are able to find the peace and hope of the resurrection in Christ Jesus. It was such an important part of Margaret's life, particularly towards the end. I hope that you take comfort in these words and always remember that love never ends. Margaret loved her family and her friends. It is very evident. Let us be assured that Margaret is now with Jesus in the place lovingly prepared for her for the end of her life here on earth. May you find hope and assurance in the unfailing love of God through Jesus Christ. As you farewell Margaret today, as you mourn her death and honour her life, I pray that God's love will touch your heart, heal your pain and support you in your grief. Amen.
So we've gathered today not only to grieve the death of Margaret, but to give thanks to God for her life and love among you, for the ways that she has enriched your life, and for her eternal life now with God. We've gathered not only to mourn on, over how different your lives will be without her, but to give thanks to God for how full your lives were while she was in your midst. Today we say farewell to Margaret, and we pray that she may take her rest and be at home with all who have died in God's love. <coughs> so let us pray to Margaret. Merciful God, we give you thanks for the life of Margaret, for the grace and mercy she received from you, for the many, many blessings in her life, for the ways that she blessed our lives and for the memories of each one of you treasure. Amen. Let us also pray for Margaret's family and friends whose sense of loss is so keen. When we cannot understand the things that happen and are weighed down by grief and loneliness, uphold us in your love. Grant us the assurance of your constant care that we may have courage for the days ahead through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us pray for that hope that which only God can give. Almighty God, give us such a vision of your purpose and such an assurance of your love and power that we may ever hold fast the hope which is in Jesus Christ. Amen. So in faith and hope and love, let us pray together the Lord's Prayer as printed in your order of service. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, <coughs> Be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. We come now to the moment of farewell. Part of our grief and sorrow may be for things left or undone, words said or never said, or moments that have never had the opportunity to happen. In silent reflection, let us take a moment to lay aside any regrets and to honour the spirit of Margaret, who would never want these thoughts carried into the future. Let us receive the gift of generosity from Margaret and the forgiveness of God. In a quiet moment now, let us in our hearts farewell, Margaret. <coughs> I'll leave you with these final thoughts. Miss me, but let me go. When I come to the end of the road, and the sun has set for me. I want no rights in a gloom-filled room. Why cry for a soul set free? Miss me a little, but not for long, and not with your head bowed low. Remember the love that once we shared. Miss me, but let me go. For this is a journey we all must take, and each must go alone. It's all, it's all part of the master plan a step on the road to home. When you are lonely and sick of heart, go to the friends you know. Laugh at all the things we used to do. Miss me, but let me go. <laughs> the grief which we now experience as we farewell Margaret is the honouring of your love for her, a love that will remain with each of you forever. We come to the time of communion. Let us entrust Margaret to the mercy and love of God. Gracious God, nothing in death or life, in the world as it is or as it shall be, nothing in all creation can separate us from your love. As Margaret's family and friends who love her, we commend her soul into your hands of forgiveness and love. Give Margaret the life that knows no age, the good things that do not pass away, and accept Margaret with unconditional love into your kingdom to be at peace with you. 
Enfold her in the arms of your mercy. Bless her in her dying and rising again in you. Bless those whose hearts are filled with sadness, that they too may know the hope of resurrection for the sake of our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Having entrusted Margaret to God's merciful keeping, we here commit her body to be buried. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who died and was buried and rose again for us, and who shall change our mortal body that it may be like his glorious body. In the sure and certain promise of our Lord Jesus Christ, and trusting in the grace and compassion of God, with the hope of the resurrection to eternal life, we commit Margaret into your care. Go forth, Margaret, in the name of God, who loves, knows you, and with the blessing of those who love you. Amen. Even as we grieve the loss of Margaret, let us commit ourselves to the comfort of those who miss Margaret most. Let us surround them with our love and pray for the comfort of God. Let us pray. God of all comfort, grant to those who sorrow the spirit of faith and courage, that they may have the strength to meet the days to come with faith, hope and love, not sorrowing without hope, but trusting in your love and goodness. Amen. God of all consolation, in your unending love and mercy for us, you turn the darkness to death into you turn the darkness of death into the dawn of new life. Be our refuge in strength and sorrow. As your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by dying for us conquered death, and by rising again restored us to life. So may we go forward in faith to meet him, and after our life on earth, be united with our brothers and sisters in Christ, where every tear will be wiped away through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The service has now come to an end. Please be assured of my prayers for each of you. Thank you for your loving care and prayers and your support for Margaret's family during this very difficult time. <coughs> Margaret will be buried later. Um, so, and will be um, in the care of Smile until that day. Before we leave today, I leave you all with this final blessing. <coughs> Support us, O Lord, all the day long of this troublous life, until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes, the busy world is hushed, the fever of life is over, and our work is done. <coughs> then, Lord, in your mercy, grant us a safe lodging, a holy rest, and peace at the last. <coughs> the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and all you love today and always. Amen. <coughs>